So we're thinking about differential equations, and we've observed some equilibria, but we've observed that not all equilibria are the same. We need to distinguish between different types of equilibria. And that distinguishing, that discrimination requires a definition, a careful definition. And this is very much worth our time and effort as these equilibria are the skeleton on which the entire behavior of the differential equation hangs. So let's go. Here's the definition. An equilibrium of a differential equation is a solution, x of t, that is constant. Let's say it's equal to some constant a. It does not change in time. This all assumes that the differential equation is on a variable x that depends on time t. You change the variables and adjust accordingly. Okay, so that's not new. We've already got that, right? We knew that that's what an equilibrium was, a constant solution. However, there are two subtypes of equilibria. An equilibrium is said to be stable if all nearby solutions, x of t, whose initial condition is close to the equilibrium a, converge to a as t goes to infinity. That means the limit of x of t as t goes to infinity is equal to a. That's a stable equilibrium. And we can absolutely see how that matches our intuition of what things look like when we plot solutions to a differential equation that has an equilibrium. We've already seen examples of a stable equilibrium where all the solutions that have nearby initial conditions, yeah, those solution curves all converge to that constant equilibrium solution. So that's a stable equilibrium. What do you think the other type of equilibrium is called? Well, in our previous observations, we observed exactly this. There were some constant solutions, some equilibria, for which nearby solutions were not converging towards it, but actually rushing away from it. They were repelled. Given that we've called the former a stable equilibrium, it would make sense to call this an unstable equilibrium. However, how do we specify what it means to be unstable? Let's try to repeat the definition. We're going to say that an equilibrium is unstable if, when we look at all the nearby solutions, x of t, whose initial conditions are close to a, well, what are they going to satisfy? We can't say that the limit as t goes to infinity of x of t is infinity or negative infinity, because that's not necessarily the case. And what happens if you pick the initial condition that's exactly a? It's not going anywhere. Hmm. Ah, here's a clever idea. We're going to say that this equilibrium is unstable if all nearby solutions with initial conditions close to a satisfy x of t converges to a as t goes to negative infinity. Aha, this is a very clever way to do things, assuming that our solutions exist for all time. Because what we're doing now is we're saying, oh, if you run time backwards, you're converging to the equilibrium so that when you run time forwards, you're rushing away from it. Can you see this? Oh, yes, you can absolutely see this if we interrogate some of the examples that we've looked at in the past, make up some new ones. You can totally see how stable and unstable equilibria satisfy this definition really well if we extend the solutions in both directions in time. This is a very clever way to set up the definitions so that choosing the equilibrium itself as the initial condition still works, still satisfies the definition, whether it's stable or unstable. It's all a function of which way time is going. Well, okay, that's great, but how about an example? Let's think back to what we did previously when we looked at Newton's law of cooling. Do you remember that differential equation? The rate of change of temperature with respect to time is proportional to quantity A minus temperature, where again, capital T temperature, uh, little kappa is this heat transfer coefficient, and capital A is the ambient temperature in which the body is immersed. We obtain the solution to this, and what was it? Uh, let's see, there's something 
times e to the minus kappa t plus capital A. Aha, if I think about this, if I think about what happens as time goes to infinity, keeping in mind that kappa is a positive constant, that exponential dies off. And indeed, this matches our intuition. The temperature converges to the ambient temperature. The coffee cools off. So, interpreting that in the light of what we've done, it sure seems as though this solution, capital A, that is an equilibrium. It feels like it might be a stable equilibrium. Let's check it. Is capital A a solution to the differential equation? Let's take the derivative and evaluate that derivative at a. We're taking kappa times quantity a minus t, substituting in capital T equals capital A. That goes to zero. That means, yes, it's a constant solution. It's not changing. It's an equilibrium. And it appears to be a stable equilibrium because if we take initial conditions that are close to A, substitute it in, we know what the solution is, converges to A. Is that the only example? Oh, no. If you think about it, there are lots of examples of equilibria that we have seen. For example, when we did a falling body under drag that reached a terminal velocity. Do you remember that one? Yes stable equilibrium. What about a bouncing ball with friction? Every time it bounces, it goes up a little bit less. What happens to that as you let time go to infinity? Aha, uh -huh. it looks like it approaches a constant solution of zero height, stable equilibrium. Now, what's the differential equation for that? I don't know, but we can observe it nevertheless. What about an unstable equilibrium? Those are, by definition, a bit harder to observe since things do not converge to them and it's hard to reverse time. But consider the following. Take a rigid rod pendulum, something that, you know, swings back and forth. It's got a weight and it's got a rigid rod. Take that thing and crank it up so that it's perfectly balanced vertical above that point of rotation. Now, if you do it perfectly, will it stay there? Well, yeah, but it has to be absolutely perfect, and you're not going to get it. You can try, you can set it up, and eventually it's going to very slowly, but then very quickly, move away. But if you had it just perfect, then it would stay. That is a great example of an unstable equilibrium. Now, there are many other examples of stable and unstable equilibria in all kinds of systems defined by differential equations, and other things as well. Once you start looking around, it's really cool to see these equilibria behind the scenes, controlling the broader dynamics of a system.